let's get started on our solids unit. We're going to talk about the surface area of spheres, prisms, cylinders, pyramids, and cones. As I've mentioned earlier in class, we're going to be using our formula sheet a lot. This is the most recent formula sheet from uh, the state of Virginia that you'll use on your SOLs. All this is going to be is you're just going to match a picture with whatever formula you need to find. So we'll go through a lot of examples here, and uh, we'll define some terms for you. So the first thing is the surface area of a sphere. So a sphere is kind of what the Earth looks like. It's like a basketball. Um, anyways, the formula for surface area is 4 pi r squared. So that's the surface area of a sphere. And again, if we look at our formula sheet, we see SA, their surface area, and here's our shape, a sphere. So again, we're just matching what we need and filling in the blanks. So if we need to find some of these things, we're asked to find the surface area of a sphere or a hemisphere. A hemisphere is just half of a sphere. So if I need to find the surface area of number one, I'm just going to use the equation 4 pi r squared. I know that 6 is r, so it's going to be 4 times pi times 6 squared. And then all you're going to do is use your calculator from here. Sorry, I didn't have it pulled up already. So we go back to our formula. It's going to be 4 times pi times 6 squared. And we get an approximation. So it's going to be 452.4. That would be centimeters squared. Our units are going to be squared for area. If I want to find a hemisphere, I just take 4 pi r squared, and I'm going to divide it by 2 because it's half. So we're told a great circle. So if I look here at my picture, I see that this great circle has this radius r. So it's going to be the same radius. So that means r is going to be 8, and then I'm ready to just plug it in. 4 pi times 8 squared over 2. And again, I would just punch that in my calculator to get the answer. We'll skip number 4 for now. We'll come back to that. But you should do number 3 on your own. Again, you're going to use the formula, and you're just going to plug in for radius. So spheres are pretty easy when we have prisms things aren't that much more difficult. So prisms are a 3D figure whose faces are polygons. Bases are, or sorry, bases are the congruent and parallel polygons. So we see a pentagonal prism here with pentagons on the top and bottom. Lateral faces are the faces which are not bases. So in this case, we have a rectangle. So that's what we'll have whenever we have prisms, we'll have rectangles. The lateral edges are where two lateral faces intersect. So a lateral edge would be right here. An altitude is a segment that is perpendicular. To the bases with an endpoint at each base plane. We have right prisms. That's a prism whose lateral edges are perpendicular to the bases. And we have the total surface area of a prism. So again, if we want to find the total surface area of a prism, we go back to our formula sheet. And we see it's going to be the lateral area plus 2 times the base. So it's the lateral area plus 2 times the base. So we're seeing that 
um, each base has an area of b square units. That's where b is coming from. The lateral area, though, if I go back, I see that the lateral area is hp. So it's going to be hp plus 2b. h is the height. p is not written here. p is just the perimeter of the base. So probably the best way to do problems and to see this is to, sorry, to see this is just to do examples. So let's do numbers two and three together. So I have this formula. I have surface area is equal to LP plus 2B. Well, first off, let's figure out what L is. Sorry, it was HP. I'm getting ahead of myself. So the height is just 6. If I take a look at these two triangles, these are my bases. So even though the height is on its side, it's still at the height. That's the distance between the bases. So H is 6. What is P? Well, to solve P, I need to find the perimeter of the base. I already have 4 plus 3. I need to find this measurement here. So what's that going to be, that diagonal? Since it's a right triangle, I know that 3 squared plus 4 squared. I should know that's 5 squared, so I'm giving you the answer right now. You can solve that by the Pythagorean theorem, but that's going to be 5. So that diagonal is 5, so my total perimeter is going to be 12. The last thing I need to do is find the base. So since it's a triangle, I go back to my formula sheet, and I see that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So 4 is going to be the height of the triangle. And 3 is going to be the base of the triangle. So I just use that formula, 1 half base times height. It's going to be 1 half 4 times 3, which is 6. So now that I have all these numbers, I'm ready to just substitute. So the surface area is going to be h which we said was 6, times P, which was 12, plus 2 times B, which is 6. Whenever I put that in my calculator, I get 6 times 12. I get a surface area to be 84 meters squared. So again, all I'm doing is figuring out how to substitute all of these things in. I can do the same thing for number 3. I have the surface area of HP plus 2 times the base. 4 is my height. To find the perimeter, I just need to add up all these sides. So these sides here are 3 square root of 5. So let's write down this information. So H is 6. P is going to be 6 plus 12. That's the top and the bottom of the trapezoid. Plus 3 square root of 5. Plus 3 square root of 5. So the perimeter is going to be 18 plus 6 square roots of 5. So probably most of you are unfamiliar with how to add 3 square roots of 5 and 3 square roots of 5. Think of it as like 3x plus 3x. And it's equal to 6x. 
only x is equal to the square root of 5. That's how I always, uh, it's helpful for me to remember because a lot of times when people do this, they'll do like 3 square roots of 10 or 6 square roots of 10. Just always remember that you can substitute the square root of 5 in for x and it should be easy. But if I want to find an approximation, which we're going to do for this, we're going to have 18 plus 6 square root of 5. And that's about 31.4. The last thing is I need to find the area of the base. To solve that, I need to go back to my formula sheet. Here's a trapezoid. Area is 1 half height, base 1 plus base 2. So the area of the base is 1 half h base 1 plus base 2. Now the thing is you might want to say h is just 4 but it's not. We're looking for this right here. This is going to be our h. So how we would solve this is if this is 6 we know that this is 6 and that means that the outside has to be 3 and 3 because 3 plus 6 plus 3 is 12. If you're a little confused on that, try to rewind it and see that this length right here has to be 12. That's 6, 3, 6, and 3 is 12. So to find that, I need to use the Pythagorean theorem. Be 3 square root of 5 squared minus 3 squared. So you have 3 square root of 5. You square that number and you subtract it from 3 squared. You take the square root of 36 and you get the height to be 6. So we're going to have 1 half times 6 times 6 plus 12. Those are the two bases. So down here is 12. Up here is 6. Again, it's just matching things up. I'm writing a lot of stuff on this one piece of paper, so it might be a little bit confusing. I've tried to change colors up a little bit. But whenever we type it in our calculator, we'll get our answer. So the base is the area of the base, or the area of the trapezoid, is equal to 54. So if I would want to bring this all together, if I'll do it in green, I have my formula. And then I just substitute everything in. So that H was 6. The perimeter was 31.4, and the base was 54. It took a little bit of work to get those things, but it's nothing beyond what you're capable of doing. And you would just plug that into your calculator. And you get a surface area equal to 216 centimeters squared. Moving on to another shape, so again those were prisms. We have cylinders. A cylinder is a solid whose bases are congruent and parallel circles. So it probably would, they lie in different planes. Um, they would have to to be parallel. So the axis is the segment whose endpoints are the centers of the bases, which are right here, the centers of the circle. A right cylinder whose axis 
and height are equal, that's a right cylinder. So for the purposes of this class, I think we're only going to deal with right cylinders. We could have a slanted cylinder, though. Uh, the total surface area of a cylinder, again, we look to our formula sheet. Let me erase everything that we've already done. So here's a cylinder. The surface area is 2 pi r times h plus r. So the height is h and r is the radius. So this is going to be significantly easier than what we just did because there's not a lot of detective work to find out h and r. Right away I know that 10 is h and 6 is r. So it's going to be 2 pi times 6 times 10 plus 6. And I just punched that in my calculator. Make sure to put your parentheses everywhere, and that way you'll get it absolutely right. So it's about 603.2. And we have to make sure we have the correct units. That would be inches squared. So right here it says a sphere with a radius of 5 inches just fits inside a cylinder. What is the surface area of the cylinder? So make sure that you're solving for the correct thing. They might ask you for the surface area of um, the sphere, but they're asking you for the surface area of the cylinder. So we have a radius of 5 and a height of 10. So R is equal to 5, H is equal to 10. I use my formula again, 2 pi R times H plus R, and I just plug everything in. 2 pi times 5, times 10 plus 5. Again, make sure you're putting in all the parentheses in the correct spot. And you get about 471.2. So those um, two tildes are the two squiggly lines. I use that because that means approximately. This number goes on forever because we're multiplying by pi, so it's approximately 471.2 inches squared. Let's move on to pyramids. So a pyramid is a solid with a base of a polygon and a vertex. All faces except for the base these are what a lateral face is, so every face that isn't the base. And all lateral faces are triangles. So if I take a look at this lateral face right here, that's a triangle. They're all going to be triangles. The vertex is the point where all lateral faces intersect. The slant height is the height of a lateral face. So this is something that I'll show you in person, the difference between the height and the slant height. It gets a little bit confusing whenever we talk a difference between volume and, and surface area because we'll need the height and the slant height for the other ones. It's pretty self-explanatory on your formula sheet also. A regular pyramid is a pyramid whose base is a regular polygon. The altitude intersects the center of the base. So we're given these two formulas, lateral area of a pyramid and total surface area of a pyramid. And see the pyramids on top. So since we're talking about pyramids, we're going to be talking about this one right here. And you see the formula they give you for lateral areas, one half LP where L is the slant height and P is the perimeter 
of the base. And if we want to find the surface area, we first need the lateral area, which is one half LP. And B, of course, is the area of the base, just like it was for our for our prisms. So if we take a look here, we can see the difference between a slant height and a regular height. So you're going to need the slant height for lateral area and surface area. And later on, when we talk about volume, you'll see that we will need the actual height. Let's see. I kind of got things a little bit off. So we're asked to find the surface area of each figure. We're going to use the formulas that we have. Um, so we're going to do one and two together. To do one, we're just going to say that the surface area is equal to one half LP plus B. Remember, one half LP is the lateral area. So I'm just substituting. So for number one, I already have the lateral, or sorry, the slant height L is equal to 5. The perimeter, this is going to be a square. So that means everything here is 6. So the perimeter is going to be equal to 6 times 4, or 24. And the area of the base, so this is a square. Again, you should know this, but if you don't, you can use your formula sheet. Um, they don't give you a square, but they give you a rectangle, which is length times width. And remember, a square is a special type of rectangle. So it's equal to length times width, which is just 6 times 6, which is 36. So none of that was difficult to find, and now I'm ready to plug it in. So the surface area is equal to 1 half L, which is 5. Not plus, sorry, it's multiply still. Times the perimeter, which is 24, plus the base, which is 36. Just put it all together, put it in my calculator. So 1 half times 5 times 24 plus 36. And I get a surface area of 96 inches squared. Don't forget your units. All right, I want to do an example like number two because this is called a composite figure. It's called a composite figure because on top I have a pyramid. And on the bottom, I have a cube, which is a special type of prism. So in order to figure this out, I need to figure out the, the area of the pyramid, and add a surface area of the pyramid, and add to the surface area of the cube or the prism. So if you think about it, though, I don't have this top part here. I don't have this top part here. So surface area is like you're wrapping a present. You wouldn't wrap the middle of that. So what I need to do is figure out how to get rid of that top part. So it's really easy with the um, surface area of a pyramid. I would just find the lateral area. So the surface area of this is just going to be 1 half LP. So that's the same as the lateral area of the prism, or sorry, the pyramid. Plus, if I want to use my formula sheet get rid of these I have this here this is the one that I want to use 
But the thing is, I'm just going to use times 1. So it's going to be 2LW plus 2LH plus WH. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm taking away one of those rectangles. So plus 2LW. And which one am I missing? The width times the height. So you have all that information. Um, the only thing that you need to solve for is the perimeter. So I'm going to leave the problem like that because these notes are taking uh, quite a bit of time. So to save a little bit of time, that's the formula you have. And we'll probably pick up on that in class whenever we start class. So let's finish the last page. Cones are pretty easy to find, or at least the examples we have. So cone is a solid with a base of a circle and a vertex in a different plane from the base. The altitude is a segment that has one endpoint at the vertex is perpendicular to the base and has its other endpoint in the same plane as the base. So we're going to be talking about um, right cones, which you, we're not quite there yet. We're going to talk about slant height. It's a segment from the vertex of a right cone to a point on the edge of the circle. In a right cone, the altitude is the same as the axis. So right here, this is a right cone. The axis and the altitude are the same thing. So to go back to slant height, we see that the slant height is the one that goes from the vertex to the edge of the circle. So the altitude goes through the cone. The slant height goes on the cone. So for the right cone, the length of the altitude is also the height. This is important because we're told the height in our formula sheet. And finally, we have an oblique cone. That's where we're off center. That's probably the easiest way to describe it, but it's where the altitude doesn't intersect the center of the circle. So here's the center of the circle about. You see that the altitude does not go through that on a oblique cone. Do you see how that's not a right angle? So that's why it doesn't work. So we have the formulas here. The total surface area is pi r times l plus r. r of course is the radius and L is the slant height. And whenever we look to our formula sheet, we see that this is given to us. So again, we're just matching things up. So it's right next to the rectangular prism. Here it is. It is pi r times L plus r. Let's do a couple examples very quickly. We'll do one and three together. I want you to do two. Two on your own. So we have our formula. Surface area is equal to pi r squared plus pi r l. So in this problem, r is just right there. r is equal to 8. And we need to find out what L is. 8 is the height, which is H. We need to find L. So whenever we figure this out, we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So L is going to be equal to the square root of 8 squared plus 8 squared 
which is going to be equal to 2, sorry, 8 square roots of 2. So we had some practice doing this earlier. Um, I'd appreciate it if you would check it out in your calculator. So whenever we do this, we see that the surface area is going to equal to pi times 8, as we're substituting r, plus pi times 8 times 8 square root of 2. Now we're ready to plug it into our calculator. The parentheses can be a little bit confusing because we have the square root. But it should just look like this. So I'm going to close the parentheses for the square root. And I'm going to close it again for that. And we get 309.5. So the surface area is about, that was 309.5 yards squared. All right, so we have another one. So if you look at number two, they give you the slant height right away. So that one's an easier one. That's why I wanted you to do that one. You don't need to use the Pythagorean theorem. For number three, you have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So L is going to be equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 10 squared. So L is going to be equal to the square root of 104. Um, that could be simplified a little bit. I believe it'll be 2 times the square root of 26. So you can just verify this in your calculator. You get that number, and 2 times the square root of 26 is indeed the same number. And we know that r is equal to 2. So we have L, we have R, we're ready to plug it in. I'll leave you to uh, finish that to put in your calculator and see what you get as your answer. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Please come to class prepared with any questions and have a great have a great